Welcome to Abtop, where we dive into the real-life drama of betrayals and jaw-dropping revelations. Hit that subscribe button, and let's dive into today's story. Blake Thompson couldn't stop grinning as he wiped the sweat from his forehead. That morning, he had been promoted to shift foreman at Carter Containers, effective immediately. The cherry on top was getting assigned to the night shift for the foreseeable future. While many dread the night shift, it was ideal for Blake. With his son Evan, a high school sophomore heavily involved in sports and clubs, working nights would allow Blake to attend all his son's events without affecting his job. Having worked the night shift numerous times before, Blake had developed a routine for sleeping during the day that suited him perfectly. That's why he was crawling across the roof trusses in his attic on a warm October afternoon. He had been given Wednesday and Thursday off with pay to rest and prepare for his new role, starting on Friday night. Blake had long planned to convert a small space above his detached garage into an apartment, a personal retreat where he could sleep peacefully during the day without the usual disturbances. Blake was running a cable to ensure internet access in the new apartment. The existing Wi-Fi signal didn't reach the space, so he decided to set up a signal extender in the attic nearest the garage, hoping it would boost the connection. While uncoiling the wire, Blake heard faint sounds coming from inside the house. It was early afternoon, and his wife Lauren should have been at work. Their son Evan was staying with Lauren's parents for a few days, so the house should have been empty. Blake crawled over the trusses towards the source of the noises. As he got closer, he realized the sounds were coming from his bedroom. The conversation grew clearer as Blake positioned himself over an old air conditioning vent in the bedroom ceiling. Lauren had complained that the old vent blew cold air on her at night, causing her frequent neck aches. Blake had installed a new vent far from her side of the bed but had left the old one in place, as removing it would have required repairing the ceiling. He gently lifted the fiberglass insulation covering the attic floor and slowly exposed the vent. His stomach churned as he saw his wife of fifteen years with a pale, thin man. Despite the agony of the sight, Blake couldn't look away. He watched in disbelief as the last remnants of his marriage crumbled. After a few minutes of the couple's argument, Blake's mind finally snapped into action. He set his phone to record and carefully placed it on the vent to capture an unobstructed view of his marital bed. I love how tight you are, groaned the guy between Lauren's legs. Does your husband ever tap this prime steak, or is he all show and no go? I've asked you not to mention Blake, protested Lauren, somewhat weakly in Blake's opinion. This isn't about him. He's a good lover and a great father. I'm sure he is. I'm getting ready to unload right here in his bed, yet you insist you're happy with how he treats you. What's wrong with this picture? I don't know why I let you talk me into doing this here, replied Lauren. There's no chance of being caught at your place. I'm going to finish, groaned Lauren. The guy covering Lauren suddenly tensed up. The couple became very still for a minute before Blake saw the man roll off his wife. See how intense it is when you take chances? asked Lauren's lover. Doing it at my place works great most of the time, but having you in your marital bed takes it to another level. Blake recognized the man enjoying his wife once he flipped onto his back after finishing inside her. He was Tyler Monroe, a driver for the delivery company where both he and Lauren worked. He was recently divorced and had a daughter in Evan's class. That sounds terrible, responded Lauren, but without much emotion. You wanted to do this here because it turns you on to think you're pulling one over on Blake. You act like it's some kind of competition. It is a competition, at least for men, replied Monroe with a soft chuckle. You're sexy, and the thrill is great, but knowing you're married and I'm getting it on in your husband's bed makes me the winner. It feels incredible. It wouldn't feel so great if Blake caught us here. I don't know why I agreed to this, but it won't happen again. I'm worried about Blake finding out. It would ruin my marriage, admitted Lauren. Let's make a deal, suggested Monroe. As long as you hold out on your husband, I won't insist we do it in his bed. Once he gets between your legs again, we'll have to return so I can reclaim my place as the top dog. I'm not going to refuse Blake. He's my husband. I can't just shut him out and expect him to be okay with it, reasoned Lauren. 
he's a man and wants it regularly. You do what you have to do, but keep in mind, I'll be inside you in this very bed as soon as possible. If he gets to you, maybe that excites you as much as it does me, replied Monroe. Blake parked his truck inside his detached garage. It was hidden from view, so Lauren had no idea he was home and certainly had no idea he was listening to her conversation. His face was covered in sweat, dripping steadily onto the insulation covering the floor of the attic. He forced himself to remain still as he listened to the couple get dressed and leave. As he made his way to the ladder, Blake considered what he had just learned. A sleazy creep was having his way with his wife, and she was even planning to hold out on him as much as possible to please her lover. Blake managed a grim smile as he considered that Lauren was going to have no trouble withholding anything from him because she was never again going to have him. He studied his situation while taking a shower and came to several quick decisions. He wouldn't let Lauren know he was aware of her infidelity. Evan had two years of high school left, so Blake decided his main focus would be his son. He'd no longer concern himself with Lauren, she simply didn't matter to him anymore. Why should he care about her when she clearly held him in contempt? He wasn't willing to vacate the house he had spent ten years remodeling so that some sleazy jerk could live there in comfort while having his way with Lauren. She didn't sound like she would be seeking a divorce, so Blake decided to hang on until Evan graduated from high school. There was one thing he knew he'd need, his apartment completed much sooner. Blake decided he'd include some major upgrades. Rather than only sleeping there while working the night shift, it would become his living quarters for the next two years. He would need a small kitchen as well as a full bathroom. By the time Evan graduated and headed for college, Blake would have had time to form a plan on how he wanted to proceed. To that end, Blake called some contractors he knew and made appointments to get estimates. He had decided to hire a company to complete the work. It would be done quickly and professionally, and he'd pay someone to do it. There was no longer a need to save pennies by doing everything himself. His promotion would easily allow him to cover the expenses. For the first time in his life, Blake realized his time was more important than money. If he saved a dollar, half would go to Lauren. He was done with his old way of life. He'd always tried to do as much of the work on his home as he could, thinking it would benefit his family. That had all changed when he saw Monroe with Lauren. He was going to make certain Evan's college education was fully funded. Beyond that, Blake was going to rebuild his life and have some fun while doing it. He no longer felt any allegiance to his cheating wife. Blake had gained control of his emotions by the time Lauren walked in after work and saw him sitting in the kitchen. You're home already? Did you get off early for some reason? Blake gazed at Lauren and decided she looked different to him. She had some lines and wrinkles in her face, and she carried a few extra pounds. Why hadn't he noticed it before? Had his love for his wife blinded him to her faults? It saddened him to think about his sudden change of attitude toward Lauren, but it had been her decision to have an affair. He was simply reacting. Yeah, we're in a bit of a jam at work. I was asked to work nights for a while, starting tonight. They let me come home, pack a lunch, and rest. I'll be headed back in later. They shouldn't ask you to work nights after a day shift, even if you had some time off during the day, reasoned Lauren. You'll be exhausted. At least lie down and sleep for a few hours. Good idea, responded Blake. I'll just go crawl between the sheets. Wait, insisted Lauren, far too loudly, as she recalled the condition of the bed. I just remembered I need to wash the bed linens. Okay, responded Blake calmly, as he grimly chuckled to himself at Lauren's discomfort. I'll just use the bed in the guest room. There's no need to get so excited. A few hours later, Blake left the house as if he were going to work. He stopped at a local sports bar, watched a football game, and enjoyed a few beers. He had previously placed an air mattress in his future apartment. Once he was sure Lauren would be asleep, he parked inside the garage and went up the stairs to his waiting air mattress. He slept surprisingly well. One of the contractors Blake interviewed the next day was between projects and offered a very good price if Blake would agree to begin immediately. Two weeks would see the contractor's crew moving to a new development miles away. 
Blake agreed and signed the contract for the work to begin Monday morning. His night shift operated from Friday night through Tuesday night. The plant would shut down Wednesday evening and start up again Friday night. Lauren knew Blake would not have to work Wednesday night, so she was surprised when he got ready for bed and headed for the guest room the next night. Why are you going to sleep in the guest room? We won't see much of each other while you're on the night shift, so why don't you sleep in our bed? asked the perplexed Lauren. Since I worked last night and slept a few hours this morning while you were at work, I'm not very tired. I'm going to watch a football game and maybe a movie after that, replied Blake with his planned excuse. I'm trying to get accustomed to staying awake at night and sleeping in the morning. I don't want to ruin your sleep, unless you're thinking we should get it on, suggested Blake as he wiggled his eyebrows suggestively. Lauren's reaction was just as Blake had expected. If he hadn't heard her conversation with her lover, he would have missed her brief deer-in-the-headlights look before she gave a weak smile. I'm pretty tired tonight. Maybe we could just cuddle a little and go to sleep, responded Lauren. Besides, Evan's home tonight. He might hear us. Cuddling won't cut it for me, replied Blake. Once I get you in my arms and feel those curves of yours, I'll want to have my way with you. If you're ruling out anything else, I'll just eliminate temptation and sleep in the guest room. You never worried about Evan hearing us before, so that's just an excuse to avoid intimacy. You really don't need to make up stories. I'm not the kind of guy to push myself on a woman. I know that, Blake. It was pretty weak, and I'm sorry. I'm just tired and don't feel romantic. I hope you understand. I understand better than you realize. Blake retorted. Let me know when you're in the mood. If I'm in the mood at the same time, we might get together. Good night. He turned and headed toward the guest room, leaving Lauren with a confused expression on her face. Blake played catch with Evan for an hour on Saturday and then did yard work. When bedtime rolled around, he strolled down the hall to the guest bedroom. Lauren watched his back and wondered why he was behaving so oddly. Blake went into work early Sunday night to prepare for his role as shift foreman. By the time the production workers began arriving, he felt very good about his work situation. He hadn't bothered telling Lauren he had been promoted to foreman. She had secrets she kept from him, so he no longer had qualms about keeping things from her. His shift went smoothly, and he was well received by those working under him. He decided he had a great group of people on his shift. The new position carried more responsibility, but Blake had seen all the problems before and knew how to deal with them. He settled into his job with minimal adjustment or difficulty. Lauren had already left for work, and the construction crew was setting up when Blake arrived home Monday morning. He spoke briefly with the job foreman to be sure they were on the same page, and then went inside. He fell asleep immediately but was awakened several times by loud sounds from the crew working on his apartment and once by the ringing phone. Cursing himself for neglecting to turn off the ringer on the landline in the guest room, Blake answered with a groggy, Hello. I'm sorry, Blake. Did I wake you up? asked his mother-in-law, Diane. Is that why you called? snapped Blake with some annoyance. You wanted to know if I was sleeping? No need to get an attitude, responded Diane. I just wanted you to know Mark and I heard you were on the night shift, and we won't disturb you. If you need us to do anything for Evan while you're sleeping, just let us know. Blake hung up the phone without responding. As he unplugged the phone from the wall, he considered just how stupid people could be. It took a few minutes, but... He fell back asleep. The construction crew completed their work in less than a week. Blake marveled at how the contractor had finished the entire remodeling in four days, it would have taken him four months. When he woke up Thursday afternoon, he drove to a furniture store and ordered a king-sized bed, a small kitchen table, four chairs, and a small sofa. Next, he drove to a major appliance dealer and selected a large flat-screen TV, a refrigerator, an oven, and a microwave. By Monday afternoon, his bachelor pad, as Blake considered it, would be ready for him to occupy full-time. He chuckled at how perplexed Lauren had been when she came home from work Thursday to find a crew of men bustling around the detached garage. 
she approached Blake as he was chatting with the job foreman and insisted on a private discussion so he could tell her what was going on. I have them finishing an apartment over the garage, revealed Blake. I want to be able to sleep during the day without people barging in or calling. I'm having it double insulated to keep noise to a minimum. There won't even be a landline since I'll be working nights for some time. I felt it would be a huge benefit to have a place where I can sleep without putting you and Evan out. You won't even know I'm around. Not know you're around, repeated Lauren. You're my husband and Evan's father. We're supposed to know you're around. I'll be going to Evan's baseball practices and games. I'll be bringing him home afterward, so he and I will spend lots of time together. Don't worry about that. We'll all be able to have dinner together. I told you a few days ago to let me know when you were in the mood for some special loving, but you haven't taken me up on my offer yet. Are you asking me to scratch your itch tonight? You're being such a jerk. Husbands are expected to do more than just scratch itches when they feel like it. We expect conversations, seductions, and sharing, ideas as well as problems. Marriage isn't just about physical stuff. You know that. Don't even think about lecturing me about what constitutes a good marriage, cautioned Blake. I'll put the efforts I make into this marriage against your efforts any time. This will work fine. All you need to do is let me know when you want me in your bed. I'm not some damn cow that needs or wants scratching. You won't be doing any scratching until you make a sincere apology, snarled Lauren. I want a nice evening out at a good restaurant along with that apology. Blake broke into a big smile and simply walked away, leaving Lauren completely befuddled. It was making it easy to keep Tyler Monroe from demanding she have sex with him in her marital bed, but Lauren was concerned about Blake's attitude. He simply wasn't his usual self, he was ignoring Lauren, and that concerned her. He had always been a very attentive husband. She made up her mind she'd give Blake a night to remember once he apologized for his rash behavior. She knew he wouldn't be able to go much longer without it. A man can't go from getting it two or three times a week to nothing and be happy. Lauren was confident he'd be after what she had. He'd been that way since they first met. He was far too young to lose interest. Blake had completely moved into his new apartment by the following Wednesday. The coming weekend would feature three nights off because of Labor Day. Evan's junior year would begin the following Tuesday. How would you two like to go to a Giants game this weekend? asked Blake at dinner on Thursday. They're playing the Dodgers and fighting for the division title. It should be a great series. Seriously? That would be amazing, thanks Dad, gushed Evan. You know I don't like baseball that much, grumbled Lauren. I'll pass on that offer. I'll find something to do around the house. I bet you will, responded Blake under his breath, yet loud enough for Lauren to hear. It's settled. Evan and I'll go to the Saturday night game. Wow, I can't wait to tell Chris about this, blurted Evan. He'll be so jealous, he's a big Dodgers fan. He used to live in Los Angeles. Why don't you invite him along, suggested Blake. Baseball's more fun when you watch it with friends, especially when they're fans. I'll call him right now. Thanks, Dad, replied Evan excitedly as he raced off to get his phone. You certainly made Evan's day, observed Lauren. Chris is a nice, polite young man. His real name is Christopher. Blake shook his head. No wonder he has a nickname. What kind of parent names a boy Christopher unless they hate him or something? Evan told me Chris's father died of a brain aneurysm two years ago, continued Lauren as she pointedly ignored her husband's comment about the boy's name. He and his mother moved here this summer to be closer to her parents. They're older and in failing health. I'll just call him Topher and pretend I never heard his real name, declared Blake, just as Evan rushed back into the room. Topher's mom said he can go, announced an almost giddy Evan. This is going to be great. Saturday afternoon, Blake pulled his truck into the driveway of a nice ranch house in a good neighborhood. Before he was able to stop, Topher was racing out the door. He jumped in next to Evan as soon as the pickup was safely parked. Mr. Thompson, Mom says she wants to meet you before we leave. 
I guess she wants to make sure you aren't a serial killer or something, offered Topher. I'm sorry about that. No problem, replied Blake as he climbed out of the truck, walked to the house, and rang the bell. A slender, rather nondescript woman about Blake's age opened the door with what he felt was a quick glance. Blake determined her legs were her best feature, they were strong and shaped perfectly. Her running shorts provided him the opportunity to admire a lot of them. Her stomach was flat, while her chest barely pushed her top away from her torso. My legs look pretty good compared to the rest of me, don't you think? asked Topher's mom, much to Blake's chagrin. I, uh, well, yeah, agreed Blake once he saw the grin on the woman's face. You've got a great pair of legs. Do you think I should let my son go to a baseball game with a man? Who checks out every woman he sees, challenged the boy's mother. I'm trying to raise a gentleman. Blake saw the laughter in the woman's eyes and knew instinctively she was busting his chops a little. He decided to play along. What you're really asking is whether you should let your son go anywhere with a man, as checking out women is the best part of being a man, replied Blake with a grin. He needs to learn how to appreciate the fair sex. I'll show him what to look for and how to do it. I certainly hope you'll be less obvious during these life lessons you'll be giving Christopher, countered the still-smiling woman. The first thing I'll teach him is to smack anyone who calls him Christopher, except his mom, of course, joked Blake. I see my son will learn to be violent with people who address him by his given name, as well as how to appreciate women's legs. Does that pretty well cover it? Not even close, responded Blake. I'll show him the fine art of judging bums and chests surreptitiously. It's important he has a well-rounded education and not focus entirely on any single female attribute. That's a relief, replied Topher's mom, thus gaining even more respect from Blake. Have a good time and be sure Topher calls if you're going to be late. My name's Emily, by the way. Seriously? Emily? What do your friends call you? asked Blake. Oh, for my male friends, I answer to Minx, Raven, Candy, or Bubbles. My girlfriends call me Emily, replied the straight-faced woman. Sounds good to me. I'm Blake. We're going to be friends, so I'll call you Minx. I kind of like that name. Why am I not surprised, responded Emily, before breaking into a hearty laugh. Christopher can go along with you any time. I love your sense of humor. Evan is a very polite young man, so I was pretty sure his parents would be fine. Thanks for inviting him to the game. We're a baseball family. I used to go to as many Giants home games as I could. My father even played in the minor leagues before I was born. He was pretty good, just not quite good enough, added Emily. Topher's a great kid, so it's no problem. I'll keep an eye on him and make sure he gets back home in one piece. Have a nice day. Is that going to stick? asked Emily. I was making a joke, protested Emily. You'll always be a minx to me, was the quick reply as Blake turned and headed back to the truck. Blake had a relaxing day at the game. Topher managed to catch a foul ball. Both boys ate too many hot dogs and drank too much soda. They fell asleep in the back seat of the truck before Blake was able to exit the parking lot. When he reached Topher's home, Blake gently shook the boy awake and escorted the sleepy teen to his front door, where he was met by a beaming Emily. He may have had too many hot dogs and sodas, admitted Blake. Of course he did. He was at a ball game, replied Emily. Thanks so much for taking him and bringing him back safely. It was my pleasure. Topher's a great kid, Minx retorted Blake. I'll see you at the next game. Blake settled into a routine which worked well for him. He would get home, have a small breakfast, and then sleep from 8 to 2 o'clock. With the extra soundproofing and blackout curtains on his windows, he usually slept soundly. Lauren complained occasionally about him always sleeping in his man cave, even on weekends. She left the subject alone as soon as Blake asked if she needed his services. Blake decided she was truly worried about Monroe insisting on having her in her bedroom and being caught. That suited Blake fine, it indicated she wasn't contemplating asking for a divorce at the moment. 
his goal of remaining married until Evan graduated high school seemed attainable. Because he was a foreman and getting less exercise, Blake purchased a home gym machine that was advertised to give a complete body workout. To his pleasant surprise, it performed as advertised. As long as he was diligent in using it, he attended all of Evan's baseball practices. Soon, the coach had him working with a few kids off to the side while the coach was doing drills with a different group of players. Evan was a pretty good player and showing signs of improvement, but Topher was a real surprise to Blake. At the start of the season, he showed some talent but was tentative and timid. Blake worked with him as much as he could, they even spent a few hours on weekends practicing at the local park. Blake decided that since he wasn't having sex, he might as well take the edge off by playing baseball with the boys. As Topher's confidence grew, his level of play increased dramatically. By the season's halfway point, Topher was batting cleanup and playing shortstop at a high level. Evan was the starting center fielder and batting third. Blake was tremendously proud of both boys' accomplishments. One thing Blake could not help but notice was the attention some of the kids' mothers had begun paying to him. For some reason, his jokes actually made them laugh. His efforts with the kids were constantly praised. A few mothers would bake something for the team, but they always made sure he received a piece of whatever it was. Evan's friendship with Topher, as well as the time Blake spent with the boys, naturally caused. Emily and Blake decided to spend time together. Blake thought of her as a smart friend with a great sense of humor. He decided to ask Emily if she had noticed the increased interest the mothers were showing him. I may be way off base here, Em, but I have to ask you a bit of a personal question, began Blake. Almost a bupe, was Emily's quick response. What? I don't get it, admitted Blake. When men preface a question to a lady by saying it's personal, aren't they usually going to ask her about her bra size? Well, yeah, that's usually true, agreed Blake with a chuckle. In this case, I was going to ask if you've noticed that some of the mothers have been treating me differently the last couple of weeks. Do you think they seem a little friendlier lately? Well, aren't you Mr. Observant, retorted Emily. You really don't know what's going on, do you? I'd need more information regarding the what to which you refer before I could answer that question, mused Blake. I understand the infield fly rule. I know you never make the first or last out of an inning at third base. You aren't referring to those baseball axioms, are you? No, I was talking about the unwritten rule of never bunting or stealing bases when you have a huge lead, quipped Emily before becoming more serious. If you've been paying attention, you know the friendliest teen mothers are also single mothers. You're a great dad, a good-looking guy, and have a pretty decent job. That makes you a damn good catch in their book, reason Emily. What about the fact that I'm a married man? Wouldn't they take that into consideration? asked Blake. They have, responded Emily. That's why they haven't actually attempted to seduce you. No one's tried that yet, have they? No one. Seducing me has never been a problem, replied Blake. I'm married, so I obviously can't be a good catch for anyone. Blake. I don't like how I seem to be the one who has to tell you this, but we're friends, so it falls on me. The mothers all know your wife is cheating on you. That's not bad enough, the rumor is she shut you off from intimacy. You don't sleep together, and it's a foregone conclusion you'll become a free agent in the not-too-distant future. These women want to sign you up for their team as soon as you're released. Blake was stunned by Emily's revelation. How could so many people know my personal situation? Who would possibly know about my sex life, or lack thereof? Then it hit him. Lauren must have told someone, and Monroe had bragged about it to others. Are you referring to your wife or her lover? asked Emily as she tried to lighten the mood. I have to say, you don't appear to be all that surprised by the rumors. Did you already suspect Lauren was cheating? No, I never suspected, answered Blake. You had no idea at all? asked a disbelieving Emily. I knew she was cheating, I just never suspected it, responded Blake. You're losing me here. How could you know it without suspecting it? It's pretty simple. I never suspected a damn thing until the moment I found Monroe with Lauren in our bed. 
I went from having no clue she was cheating to being certain in the space of a few seconds. I totally skipped being suspicious. That revelation creates more questions than it answers, stated his confused friend. You saw them doing the dirty, yet you remain married and you're not incarcerated. You're not a swinger, are you? Or a guy who likes to watch? Please don't be one of those creeps. I'm not. Don't worry about that, assured Blake. I decided to adjust my priorities. Being able to spend a lot of quality time with Evan and not being a part-time dad became my first objective. Living with Lauren rather than divorcing her seemed like the best way to accomplish it. I started working nights, and that's always been tough on our intimate life. I built a nice apartment over my detached garage and lived there. I told Lauren it was so I could get sleep during the day without being pestered and annoyed by everyday things. She wasn't happy about the sleeping arrangements, but Monroe told her every time she had sex with me, he'd insist on having her in our marital bed. That seemed to worry her, just not enough to stop being with him. She thinks her affair is a secret and wants to keep it that way. I didn't tell her, but I won't be getting intimate with her for any reason. I went to the clinic and was tested for STDs. I'm clean. I want to keep it that way. You're serious. You heard that witch? How can she treat a guy like you so badly? What a jerk that guy is, fumed Emily. All the single moms think you'd be a great catch. I think you may have an inflated opinion of my desirability. I've never been the matinee idol type. I do have a good job, so that might make me look better to some of the more desperate women, offered Blake. Are you kidding? Look how handsome you are. You have a wonderful smile, pointed out Emily. You're strong, kind, smart, and great with kids. If I weren't so plain-looking and flat-chested, I'd have already tossed my hat into the ring along with my full beaut bra. I think I'd better shut the hell up, said Blake with a chuckle. Thanks for being a good enough friend to tell me what people are saying and thinking. I didn't realize everyone knew I'm a cock. It's pretty embarrassing. I can't keep my own wife happy. I'm a world-class chump. You're a good man who wants to be a good father to his son. You're strong enough to endure this so you can have a great relationship with Evan. Christopher thinks you're pretty cool too. Who? asked Blake. You must be feeling better if you can tease me about Christopher's name, observed Emily with a smile. You're a great friend. You've kept me from getting my head stuck too far up my butt. I just hope Evan doesn't find out that the horse has either left the barn or is getting damn close. Emily Christopher says Evan knows things aren't right at home. You pretty much avoid his mother, he's bound to hear something when so many people know about it. You know what worries me? Added Emily Christopher, Evan is sweet on Haley Monroe. How awkward is that for him and for me? She's a nice girl, she's got no idea what a miserable prick her father is. I'm just glad Evan isn't the one sniffing around Haley, stated Blake. What a mess that would be. I should be happy for small favors. Christopher tells me Evan is pretty interested in Madison Parker, but that shouldn't surprise you very much. She comes to every game and cheers for every move he makes, stated a smiling Emily. Yes, I've noticed her hanging around. She seems like a nice girl. I knew her dad and uncles in school, recalled Blake. They're a good family. Two nights later, Evan's team was playing in the first round of the district championships. Blake realized as game time drew closer that he was probably more nervous than Evan. It didn't help that the usual three single mothers were determined to get his attention. Janet Wilson was wearing a top that exposed a good portion of her ample chest. She kept finding reasons to lean over in front of Blake to pick something up or look for something. Blake had to admit her cleavage was spectacular. Brittany Dorn kept her chest covered but with a very tight and form-fitting sweater. Her small waist and flat stomach served to accentuate the allure of her full, firm chest. She constantly asked Blake questions about the team and the players. Jillian Patterson was less subtle. For some reason, she had to stand close enough to Blake to keep her impressive chest pressed against his arm or side. Emily gave him a knowing smirk as she handed him a soda and hot dog before returning to her seat on the first base side of the diamond. 
Blake noticed all three ladies found some reason to leave his general vicinity all at the same time. He thought it was odd until he heard a familiar voice behind him. I thought I'd join my husband this afternoon to watch my son play. I didn't realize I'd have to wade through so many admirers to reach him, observed Lauren more loudly than necessary. What's going on? The game hasn't started yet, but Evan looked pretty good in batting practice, replied Blake in an effort to deflect the question. Nice try, snapped Lauren. Why were those women hanging around you like flies on a turd? It's a good thing you aren't allergic to silicone. If you're asking me to explain the workings of the female mind, you're out of luck. I have no idea, admitted Blake. I'm even surprised you're here. My son is playing in an important game. I'm here to support him, obviously. Other mothers are here, apparently, some of them are not here just for their kids. You've been too busy to come to the games, observed Blake. How did you get away from your obligations today? Lauren glanced at her husband. When he mentioned her obligations, she briefly wondered if he was implying something. As quickly as the thought entered her mind, she dismissed it. If he had any suspicions, he would have been much angrier and far more confrontational. One thing she knew about Blake was he would never accept her cheating. If he knew, he'd let her know about it in a very obvious way. I made time. This game is important for Evan, which makes it important for me. I've hardly seen you since you went on the night shift, so I thought it would be nice to spend some time together cheering for Evan, reason Lauren. As Lauren and Blake sat down in the bleachers, she noticed she was being watched by several of the other mothers, and they didn't appear to be all that friendly. Lauren wondered about that. What could she have possibly done to annoy the other mothers? This was the first game she had attended, she had no other form of interaction with any of them, so she could think of no reason for them to dislike her. Lauren then noticed Emily sitting off to the side as usual. She failed to stand out in any way. Although Lauren noticed her hair had been professionally done, and her legs looked good in a pair of shorts, which may have been a little too short, especially considering the cool temperatures of the day. The game began, and Blake's attention was riveted on the playing field. The first two batters struck out before Evan stepped into the batter's box. Lauren was worried for her son when she saw how fast the first pitch was and how close to his head it had been. The second pitch was low and away from Evan but he connected solidly and lined it over first base for a stand-up double. Topher was the next batter. Lauren noticed that he seemed older, stronger, and more confident than he had been last summer. The first pitch popped into the catcher's mitt close to Topher's head. If he hadn't leaned back, it might have hit him. Lauren heard Blake chuckle as Topher prepared for the next pitch. Trying to intimidate those two boys is a big mistake, stated Blake to those within hearing. I just hope the pitcher tries to sneak a fastball by Topher. The other spectators nodded in agreement as the pitcher went into his delivery. He was a hard thrower and put something extra on the next pitch. There was a loud crack as Topher's bat met the baseball as it crossed the plate. Oohs and ahs echoed across the bleachers as the ball disappeared over the center field fence. Evan trotted across the plate and waited for his friend to touch home plate before exchanging high fives. Emily was beaming with pride as her son circled the bases. She glanced over at Blake only to see small tears on his cheeks. He had spent countless hours working on fielding and batting with Evan, and her son's pleasure and pride were almost palpable. Emily was extremely grateful for the mentoring Blake had provided her son since their arrival. Evan was growing into a fine young man, and Blake had played a huge part in that. Lauren drove to the pizza shop to join Blake and Evan as the team celebrated their win. She found a parking space quite far from the door. By the time she entered the restaurant, she saw Janet Wilson and Brittany Dorn standing too close to her husband. Their big chests were frequently in contact with his arms, back, and chest as he helped sort out the drinks for the boys. Lauren wasn't surprised when they seemed to disappear as she approached. It caused her to mentally replay a conversation she had two weeks prior with her lover, Tyler Monroe. It's about time we got it on in your bed, don't you think? Monroe had pushed as Lauren was getting dressed after a quick session. Having you in your husband's bed really gets my motor running, she had said. 
you said you wouldn't do it in our bed again until Blake and I were together, she reminded Monroe. I'm not comfortable risking it, she added. Are you actually telling me you haven't done anything with your husband since the day we did it in your house, asked her incredulous lover. You said I should shut him off for as long as I could, and you wouldn't press me to have sex in our house until he made love to me. He went on the night shift that day and has been sleeping in a room over the garage. We haven't even shared a handshake since. That's just plain crazy, replied Monroe. He's way too young, and you're far too hot for him to lose interest. Is he gay? Does he have a girlfriend or something? He's certainly not gay, insisted Lauren. He's very masculine. He'd never cheat on me, he's just working nights. He's tired most of the time. He only shows up for dinner, except on weekends when he does the yard work and things. No normal man married to a piece of meat like you would willingly go without, even if he worked 18-hour days, stated Monroe. He must be getting it elsewhere. That should make it easier for us to get together. He's getting his, and I'm getting what used to be his. Blake would never be unfaithful to me, stated Lauren firmly. He takes our marriage vows very seriously. He isn't the kind of man to sneak around and engage in some petty affair. Is that what you think you're doing? demanded Monroe. Well, no. This is just a temporary thing. Blake's been too busy with work and Evans baseball to pay much attention to me. I deserve a little fun. I work hard to keep the house and make meals as well as work full time, reasoned Lauren. We know this won't last. Monroe smiled as he considered Lauren's words. I suppose you're right. We'll just enjoy the ride while it lasts. Give me a day, and I can drill you in your bed. It still cranks me up. As Lauren recalled Monroe's words, she became concerned. She watched the two women hovering around Blake slink away. It was obvious he had some damn attractive women with big chests and tight bodies who were interested. She realized she needed to protect her marriage from their efforts. Then she noticed Emily sitting off by herself. Lauren quickly formulated a plan. She put on a big smile and sat down next to a surprised Emily. It's good to see you again, Emily. Topher has become quite a good ball player, and he's a very nice boy. You should be proud of him. I am, admitted a wary Emily. Evan is doing very well too. The time Blake has spent with him is paying off. He's really been a great mentor for Topher. Yeah, sometimes Blake is too good, responded Lauren as she saw an opening for her proposal. I'm sure you've noticed how those big-chested blondes are always hanging around him. I was wondering if you could help me out. I know Blake would never stray under normal conditions, but he's a man, and those women are all but flashing their big chests and spreading their legs when they're around him. How do you expect me to help you out? asked Emily. Spray them with cold water when they get too close. You know I'm not able to go to most of the games and practices because of my work and other commitments, began Lauren carefully. I know I can trust Blake with you, you aren't his type at all. If you would just stay close when I'm not around, I'd really appreciate it. I'm going to tell Blake he should stay closer to you and act more attentive. Those husband-stealing hussies will think he's settled on you and hopefully leave him alone. I know it may be embarrassing for you to pretend like that, but it's for a good reason. You could save our marriage. Please let me see if I have this right, responded a disbelieving Emily. You're worried that these attractive, sexy single mothers might seduce Blake, so you're asking me to sort of stand in for you when he's at ball games and practices? You feel I'm a safe single mother because I don't have big chests and I'm rather drab looking. I didn't say you were drab. I just know Blake, for whatever reason, is less likely to fall for you than some big-chested ex-cheerleader type. You'd be helping him keep his vows. You feel that cheating on your spouse is a deal-breaker? questioned Emily thoughtfully. Would it be so terrible if he tapped a few of those willing ladies as long as he kept you as his number one? I hope you're joking, rejoined Lauren. I love my husband, but I'll never tolerate cheating. It's truly a deal-breaker you mentioned. It destroys the marriage contract. I could never condone infidelity. As far as I'm concerned, the marriage would be over. You must understand how I feel. 
you were married for years. I understand fidelity and loyalty, acknowledged Emily. It makes sense that cheating breaks the marriage contract. I have to agree. I have to get over to Blake. Can I depend on you to keep a close watch on him when I'm not around? Oh yes, responded Emily with a smile. Be sure to explain it all to Blake. I'll keep my part of the bargain. Who would be better to keep a good man celibate than a flat-chested, homely, boring woman? I wouldn't have put it quite that way, but you've pretty well covered it. Thanks again, replied Lauren as she left to join her husband. Last night Lauren wanted to talk before I left for work, began Blake at the next day's practice. The crux of it was that there are too many sexy single moms hanging around me. She feels I would be much safer if I stayed close to you, Mink, or as she calls you, Emily. Why don't I feel safer? Blake asked. You're a smart man. You know you're never going to be safe around a single woman, regardless of how small her chest is and how plain she looks, joked Emily. Minx, you're one of the most attractive women I've ever met, responded Blake earnestly. You're the whole package. Wow, you just made my job harder, admitted Emily with a blush. I'll make an appointment to have your eyes checked after the baseball season ends. You'll find I have 20-20 vision and I'm an excellent judge of character, with one glaring exception, stated Blake. I seem to have misjudged my loving wife. I think she may have misjudged us, replied Emily, that is, if you really find me attractive. Blake was amused by the reaction of the single mothers as Emily remained close by his side. He spent a lot of time chatting and joking with her. The most common reaction was disbelief, followed closely by disappointment. It took less than one practice for Emily to cut him from the herd. The team's next game required a three-hour drive to Middletown. It was decided the team would travel the day before the game and spend the night at a hotel. It was hoped the boys would be rested and fresh for their next challenge. Blake had given rides to Jeff Winston's parents as well as Emily. The discussion on route focused on the team's chances of winning the district and possibly the state title. They arrived at the hotel right behind the team bus. Blake helped Jeff retrieve his luggage from the trunk. Some of the parents, including the Winstons, had volunteered to chaperone the boys and would be staying at the same hotel. All the other parents had to make their reservations at different hotels since there were several games being played the next day. A great many fans and players were in town. Six teams would compete in three games from different class schools. Before Evan had climbed on the bus, Blake had told him he would not be staying in the same hotel and to behave for his coaches and chaperones. He assured his son he would be at the team practice the next morning. What hotel are you staying at, Minx? asked Blake as the Winstons wheeled their bags to the team hotel. The same hotel you are, was her simple response. I never told you which hotel I was using. How did you find out, asked the perplexed Blake. I didn't was the brief response. How do you know we're at the same hotel? It's pretty busy this weekend. You may not be able to get a room at the last minute, pointed out Blake. I'm sure something will come up, replied Emily with a big grin, confusing Blake further. Blake arrived at his hotel a few minutes later and asked, Minx, do you want to see if you can get a room while I check in? I can wait around to be sure you find something. Thanks, but I'll just wait here. It'll be fine, she insisted. Blake was finally beginning to see the light. As he checked in and picked up his room access cards, he returned to his truck to find Emily waiting. Is there any chance you'd like one of these cards to my room? he asked. It's room 207. What a thoughtful gesture, exclaimed Emily as she stepped from the car, accepted the key, and kissed Blake on the cheek. Let's get to bed. It's going to be a long night. Blake was far more tired getting up the next morning than he had been when he went to bed. At first, he had mentally struggled with the reality of breaking his marriage vows, but Emily helped him through it. Let's look at this logically. Lauren has not only been unfaithful, but she's agreed to shut you off completely. Even if she hadn't, she would still be placing your health at risk by having unprotected sex with a damn tomcat. Effectively, she's made sexual relations with her both unsafe and undesirable. She's released you from your vows and your marriage contract. 
I haven't had sex in over a year. I've had checkups and I'm clean. You were tested after you discovered she's a cheating skink, and you're clean. I went on the pill over a month ago in hopes of hooking up with you. Can you honestly give me one reason we shouldn't sleep together? Is it my looks your wife thought? I was a perfect foil for all the big-chested, beautiful women who were showing an interest in you because she knew you'd never be attracted to me sexually. Am I just not desirable? Mink, you're extremely desirable. Don't ever suggest you aren't. I've never cheated on Lauren, and it's taking some adjustment to my thinking, but you've made a great case for us getting together. I'm ready, declared Blake with a grin. There's something else you need to know first, replied Emily. Both my parents are in hospice and aren't expected to live much longer. My brother's been sending game films of Topher to a friend of his. The friend is the baseball coach at the best prep school in the Los Angeles area. If Topher gets a baseball scholarship for next year, we'll probably move back. I like you a lot, but we're not looking at a lasting relationship. It can't last. Look at us, you're a good-looking married man with a cheating wife, and I'm a plain Jane with a son who has a chance to get an athletic scholarship to a good university. I have to do what's best for Topher. That's great to hear about Topher, stated Blake proudly. He's a good kid and a very talented ball player. I'm glad he'll have a chance to hone his skills against strong competition and gain a good education at the same time. You're the biggest reason he's being looked at by better schools. I know how much time and work you put in with him. It's ironic that you, being such a good mentor to my son, actually gave us the opportunity to move back to Los Angeles and away from you. I don't think I'll be very good at a one-night stand sort of thing, worried Blake. It might be better to forego sex entirely than to have one night of sex and go back to being a monk. You silly man, I said. We'd probably move back to Los Angeles for the coming school year. That's over six months away. A guy could get laid a lot in six months unless he's too old for a steady diet of hot sex with a very needy woman. That's something we'll just have to find out. Will you live up to your nickname, Minx? joked Blake. I will for you, big boy, promised Emily. When you want me, just whistle, and I'll teach you how to whistle. I've always been told my whistling is quite respectable, quipped Blake. Then you're not doing it right, retorted Emily. The baseball team went on to win the state championship, and Topher was awarded a scholarship to a prestigious California prep school. Both of Emily's parents passed away before Thanksgiving, within a week of each other. Blake and Evan attended their funerals. Blake met Emily's brother and liked him immediately. Blake, meet my brother Derek, introduced Emily. Derek, this is Topher's baseball mentor and our good friend Blake. Holy crap, your name is Derek, blurted Blake. Right, agreed Emily's brother. Only Emily and my folks ever call me Derek. I answered a grim with everyone else. What do you call my sister? asked Blake. I call her Minx, but don't ask why, insisted Blake. I don't think I have to ask, replied Grimm with a laugh. Blake spent Thanksgiving with Lauren and Evan at her parents' house. For the first time in months, Blake found himself preparing for bed with Lauren. They always stayed over Thanksgiving night, and Blake couldn't come up with a good excuse to change that tradition. Lauren took her time removing her clothes in front of Blake. He tried to keep his reaction subdued, but his body gradually responded to the visual stimulation. Lauren was a very attractive woman with a nicely toned body. We haven't slept together in a very long time, said Lauren. You must be in need of some loving by now. Make love to me. Blake felt bad about his next comment, even as he replied, You finally admit you need to be properly scratched. I knew you'd break. I'll be glad to top you off and put a big smile on your face for the holiday. You miserable pig. You won't be getting anything for years with that attitude, snarled Lauren. What's wrong with you? You can just forget I was thinking of allowing you to even touch me. Okay, was Blake's only reply as he rolled over so his back was to Lauren. He didn't second guess his comment, although it was out of character for him. It did achieve his objective, which was avoiding intimacy with Lauren. Blake did regret, however, that his marriage had deteriorated to its present state. 
Lauren was worried about Blake's snide comment, making sleep difficult. As she lay next to him, she wondered if he knew about her affair or if he was just being miserable because they hadn't been intimate lately. She decided she would have to discuss it with Monroe. He needed to forget about having her in their marital bed. If she slept with Blake, that statement could cause her to avoid and deny her husband, which could eventually make him suspicious and ruin her marriage. Blake had a routine he followed when he worked the night shift. He went home, ate a small breakfast, and went to bed by 8 a.m. Often, he would be awakened around 2 p.m. by Emily climbing into his bed. They would enjoy each other's company for about an hour before Emily had to leave to pick up Topher from school. Their arrangement suited them both perfectly. Blake found the time they spent together fulfilling and kept him sane while dealing with his deteriorating marriage. Lauren, on the other hand, had grown increasingly paranoid. She noticed Blake's continued disinterest in. Lauren began to worry that Blake might be seeing someone else. Her fears were further fueled by her own guilt and Monroe's constant suggestive questions that Blake must be getting it elsewhere. As time passed, her anxiety began to manifest in small ways, accusing Blake of staying out late, questioning his every move, and even making unexpected visits to his workplace. Despite her suspicions, Lauren couldn't bring herself to confront Blake directly. Instead, she confided in Monroe, who only seemed to enjoy her distress. He encouraged her paranoia, subtly feeding her fears and reinforcing the idea that Blake was cheating on her. This tension made Lauren even more desperate to hold on to her marriage despite her ongoing affair. One evening, after a particularly heated argument with Monroe about their relationship, Lauren decided to surprise Blake at his apartment over the garage. She hadn't been there since it was completed and thought showing up unexpectedly might help her reconnect with her husband. When she arrived, she found the door slightly ajar. She hesitated for a moment before pushing it open and stepping inside. The apartment was dark, and for a moment, Lauren thought Blake might not be home. But then she heard faint voices coming from the bedroom. Her heart pounded as she moved closer to the door, which was slightly open. Lauren's worst fears were confirmed when she peeked inside and saw Blake lying in bed with Emily. The two were laughing softly, completely unaware of Lauren's presence. Her stomach churned as she realized that her husband, whom she had betrayed, was now betraying her in turn. Feeling a mix of anger, betrayal, and guilt, Lauren quietly backed out of the apartment and left. She drove aimlessly for hours, her mind racing. She had no idea how to handle this new development. Confronting Blake would mean admitting her own infidelity, something she wasn't prepared to do. In the days that followed, Lauren became increasingly erratic. She tried to act as if nothing had changed but her paranoia was evident. She began showing up at Blake's work unannounced, questioning him about his activities, and even following him on occasion. Blake, for his part, noticed the change in Lauren's behavior but chose to ignore it. He knew that confrontation would lead to an explosive situation and wasn't interested in engaging with her in that way. One day, after Lauren had followed Blake to Emily's house, she finally snapped. She confronted Blake as he was leaving Emily's place, demanding to know what he was doing there. I'm seeing a friend, Blake replied calmly, refusing to give Lauren the reaction she was seeking. A friend? You're sleeping with her, aren't you? Lauren spat, her face contorted with anger. Blake looked at her coolly. What if I am? What does it matter to you? You've been sleeping with Monroe for over a year now. I figured it was only fair that I find someone else too. Lauren was stunned into silence. She had never expected Blake to confront her so directly, and the coldness in his voice chilled her to the bone. You knew, she stammered. I've known for a long time, Blake replied. I've just been biding my time, waiting for the right moment. You see, Lauren, I don't need to shout or get angry to make my point. I just needed to find a way to move on from you, and now I have. Lauren's anger quickly turned to desperation. Blake, please, I can explain. It wasn't supposed to be like this. We can work things out, I promise. Blake shook his head. There's nothing to work out, Lauren. You made your choices, and I've made mine. 
the only thing left is for us to figure out how to move forward separately. With that, Blake turned and walked away, leaving Lauren standing alone, her world crumbling around her. As Blake drove away, he felt a sense of relief. For the first time in a long while, he felt like he had control over his life again. He wasn't going to let Lauren or anyone else dictate how he lived. He had endured enough humiliation, and now it was time to reclaim his dignity. Lauren faced the repercussions of her actions head-on. She came to terms with the end of her marriage and the realization that she alone was responsible for her circumstances. The harsh reality of her loss hit hard, leaving her with nothing of value. After their confrontation, Blake quickly filed for divorce. The process was quick, and he was awarded custody of Evan, who had become distant from his mother due to the tense atmosphere at home. Lauren relocated to a modest apartment, where she spent her time reflecting on the decisions that led to her downfall. Meanwhile, Blake concentrated on rebuilding his life. He continued his relationship with Emily, though they both acknowledged it was not destined to last forever. Once Christopher's scholarship was secured, Emily and her son returned to Los Angeles. They parted amicably, appreciating the support and time they had shared. Ultimately, Blake found solace in having managed the situation with grace and emerging stronger. He remained a dedicated father to Evan, who thrived academically and athletically, inspired by his father's perseverance. Blake's life had shifted in unexpected ways, but he embraced the change, confident that he had reclaimed control over his future. Thank you for following this journey of betrayal and redemption. If you were in Blake's position, how would you handle it? Could you move on and rebuild your life as he did? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more compelling stories like this one.